Hey everyone, happy Halloween. It is so good to be back to dressing up this year. Last year I wasn't able to since I was at my brother's wedding, but this year I am back to dressing up even though this costume is an older costume of mine. I have had it for a number of years, but even though it is an oldie, it is still a goodie. Um, for those of you who have uh, read Dragonlance and are Dragonlance lovers, this is what I've always called my Tika Whalen outfit because it uh, was labeled as a tavern barkeep um, when I first got it back many, many years ago, I think like 12 years ago or something like that, um, back when I was in high school and um, definitely I've always loved the Dragonland series, so I had to immediately jump on this since this is actually how Tika is described um, in the book with her fluffy white skirt, the vest, and the red skirt. Um, and it is a full length skirt and everything, so definitely uh, always have thought about it as my Tika Whalen outfit. I would love to hear what you guys dressed up as this year. Um, I always love seeing all the costumes, and especially when I hand out candy to kids because uh, they always have the most fun and dressing up and being excited to show it to everybody and you always get to see such great costumes. So I would love to hear what you guys wear this year for Halloween. Or if you saw any great costumes, you're welcome to let me know that as well. Alright, let's go ahead and get into today's class. Welcome back fantasy fiction fanatics, it's great to see you again and I hope you're doing well. Today's class is going to be on another character analysis. This time it's going to be on Lucy Pevensey from the Narnia Chronicles. Um, before we go ahead and jump right in, let's go ahead and go over the trivia question. The correct answer for this past couple weeks was false. Not all yokai are evil. Um, I do feel like that is a common misconception, but for mythology-wise, as well as how they are treated in fantasy stories, um, they are not always evil or bad characters or bad beings. Um, and the people who got it correct was John and Troy. So great job to both of you for uh, participating and getting it correct. Nice try to those of you who answered and were not correct. Uh, I appreciate you answering and participating with me. It's really fun to play with you guys. If you have not joined the trivia question already and would like to, you are welcome to do so. It's on the blog fantasyfictionfanatics.net. If you're on desktop, it will be on the right-hand side. You'll just scroll down just a little bit and you'll be able to see it right there. If you're on mobile, you'll have to scroll almost all the way down in order to see the question. But I hope that you join and uh, try and see if you can get it. I love playing with you guys and I love to see the answers. Okay. My pardon. Okay. Let's go ahead and start with getting into our analysis here. So Lucy is the youngest of the Pevensey siblings and she is also the very first of the siblings to discover the uh, way to Narnia in the back of the wardrobe. Um, she eventually becomes Queen of Narnia and even though she leaves Narnia for a while she comes back several times to have more adventures in Narnia and to enjoy the um, people that live there and the different things that happen there. So let's go ahead and talk about her traits and who she is as a person. The first thing off is that she's a very trusting individual. She's very, very trusting um, and she's a very happy person. Very happy, someone who doesn't really see, understands that there are dark things in the world but chooses to see past them and to see the happiness in the world. She's a very kind and caring person and those for her go hand in hand. She really, really cares about people and so she treats them very, very well. She cares about all the uh, beings in Narnia and she cares about the people that she knows in her own world. So she is constantly treating everybody kindly and really caring about them and being concerned for them. She's also a very charismatic person. And I feel like that's not something that most people would 
necessarily connect with her, but she really is in the fact that um, it kind of goes with her kind and caringness um, because that uh, she treats everybody so well that makes people like her. But she's also not afraid to talk to people. She's not afraid to um, speak her mind. She's very much uh, a social person and is very able uh, is able to very easily endear people to her, even if that was not her original intent. But she definitely is someone who has a lot of uh, charisma and can easily talk to other people. Um, she's a very brave person, very, very brave, and very, very loyal, especially to her family and those that are closest to her. She's super smart, uh, smarter than most of her siblings give her credit for. Um, she definitely knows how to get herself out of situations. She also is very smart to be, for her age, um, to be able to deal with the stresses that happen in Narnia and to be able to overcome them. Um, she's also a very forgiving person. We especially see that with her brother. She's a very forgiving person um, and doesn't hold grudges against anybody. And she's also very curious. This is especially the case when she is in Narnia. She loves to explore and to see new things and to meet new people. So overall, she's got a lot of good qualities to her. I feel like overall she's a very positive character, a very positive person, so she's got a lot of positivity to her and how she interacts with other people. So given her personality, what is her role in the story? So she is in several books, um, but especially in this first book and her being so young, she's definitely, her role is as the innocent, uh, especially in Lion, um, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which I know is not super, actually book number one, but I mean the first book that she's in um, is what I meant by number one, um, is that she definitely views Narnia with a sense of innocence because I believe she's only like eight or something like that, eight or ten, uh, when she first visits Narnia. So she hasn't had uh, enough experience in her life to be more cautious or to be more bitter about anything. She's very innocent. She's coming to it at a place that, um, you know, a lot of kids would for a fantasy adventure with a lot of openness, a lot of curiosity, a lot of joy. Um, and she brings that whenever possible in this story. Even when they're being chased and even when they're having a hard time, she has a lot of innocence of looking at this world and just feeling the wonder of it and just wanting to enjoy the place and um, even though there's a lot of danger she still has a lot of fun and loves being there and everybody that she meets there so we see a lot of the the innocence look at uh, Narnia through her and we understand that she doesn't have the same experience as necessarily Peter who's the oldest to have more concerns about what's going on or what should be done at certain times um, so she brings a lot of joy and such as the innocent character. Also, um, I think her um, role is also as a wanderer. And this, I believe, she kind of develops, though it is in the first one as well, but it kind of develops over the course of the several books that she's in because she is someone who just truly loves the adventure. She loves going around Narnia. She loves meeting the people in Narnia. Even in the first one, she doesn't, you know, go back in the wardrobe and is scared to go alone. She just instantly starts looking around, meets Tumnus, says hello, wants to show uh, her siblings when they finally all come. All about Narnia, um, wants to look around. Uh, as she's going on her different adventures, she just loves going different places, meeting new people. Uh, she's definitely not... Uh, someone who's like, I'll just stick to this one area because I know it. She's like, let's get going, let's have an adventure, let's save the world, let's go. Um, so I definitely feel like she has a bit of that wanderer role in uh, several of these books that she shows up in. So um, definitely feel like those are her two main roles in the book and um, I feel like she adds a lot with those roles. Let me know if you think I missed anything or if you feel like I should have added something. Um, but I feel like those two really encompass her um, at the beginning as well as later in the stories. 
Next, let's go ahead and talk about what she brings to the story. And the first one goes a lot with her role in the story, which is innocence. So she is such a wonderful, smart girl. Um, she is someone who is just burning with a desire to go out there and explore and to help people. Um, she is the healer of the four of them. She's the one that likes to heal people and has that potion. Um, she brings a lot of innocence and joy to this story. She clings to the wonder of the world. She clings to the wonder of exploring this place and seeing new parts of it. She really does just have this innocent glow to her that infects the, in a good way, the story and infects the audience with just a sense of wonder and amazement at everything going on and just a love of the people that she meets Obviously, she's not a big fan of the um, uh, enemy side, but other than that, everyone who's on uh, the sense of good, she is just adores them all. She loves them all. Um, she gets very close to Mr. Tumnus and the Beavers, and she just brings a lot of innocence and joy and excitement to the whole journey while everyone else is freaking out. Um, she brings the it's gonna be okay we're gonna get through it let's enjoy the excitement of it all um and i really love that about her and it is such a refreshing aspect when a, there is a lot of serious characters and a lot of characters that get bogged down by how uh, much their fear takes over but lucy really keeps alive her brave spirit and her wonder for narnia the next thing that she brings to the story is forgiveness and kindness. And I put this together because I feel like it kind of matches together. I feel like she always gives forgiveness to anybody and everybody. So if there's anybody that makes a mistake, anything that something goes wrong, um, her brother Edmund, when he betrays them, she instantly forgives him, instantly feels like she should protect him and be like, hey, he's our brother, let's not jump to conclusions. Or even if he did something bad, we can't just hold a grudge against him. We have to save him or bring him back, make him understand. So, pardon me. Um, she's always thinking about the people that she cares about and her loyalty to them brings this sense of constantly forgiving them for their faults, for their mistakes, for anything that goes wrong. And the kindness where she keeps caring about them and being kind to them even when they have done her wrong. And again, it kind of matches with her innocence and the fact that it is refreshing uh, versus other characters who would punish um, people who messed up or who um, were cruel or whatever else. Um, and she really brings a spirit of, hey, let's let's not treat them this way. Let's be kind to them and let's forgive them and give them a second chance and see if they can prove themselves as worthy of the feelings that we have for them and the care that we have for them. So I think that she's just a really wonderful character to bring such a constant positivity to the story. I don't feel like there's ever a time that I can remember where I feel like she brought negativity. She is constantly the source of good things even in the darkest of times in these stories. Okay, next let's go ahead and talk about her goals and I feel like throughout all of the books she really only has one main goal and that is to go on adventures in Narnia with her family and her friends. I feel like that's so simple <laughs> um, but I feel like really that's all she really wants especially after she first visits Narnia she just constantly wants to be there and to be close to Aslan and Mr. Tumnus and her friends and even though when she visits much later and she makes new friends um, that she didn't have before she is immediately endears to them and just wants to stay with them and spend more time with them going on adventures and saving Narnia. She just wants to be there for them, she just wants to have fun with them, enjoy her time there. If she had her choice, she would never go back to her own life. Uh, she would just stay in Narnia forever. 
Um, and that's really all she really wants to do is just adventure together with her family, with her friends. She was so sad when Peter and Susan were not going to be coming back to Narnia um, because she just wants to have a good time with everybody there. I feel like that's true. Her goal is, is to just have fun. And I think that, again, it, it really fits with her and her personality. And I think it's such a refreshing thing to have someone with a goal that is just to be together with her loved ones and to have fun adventures with them. Let's move on to her relationships. So I want to talk about a couple different ones. Um, the first one is kind of a group relationship, uh, the one that she has with her siblings. And of course, she is, you know, have a different, she does have a different connection with each one of them a little bit, but I feel like in general, her relationship with them as a whole is similar. So I kind of grouped them all together. Um, all three of her siblings do pretty much treat her like the little girl of the family. They treat her like she is just a little kid that, especially like, you know, when she discovers Narnia, they're very much like, oh, you're just playing games. Why are you playing games? It's not fun for you to cry wolf, you know, and say that there's something that's not there and act like it's truth, even though, you know, it's not possible um, until they do actually discover that, yes, uh, she did discover Narnia. <laughs> but all three of them really just treat her as like she's a little kid that doesn't know anything and can't um, make adult decisions and can't... Um, be on the same level as the rest of them and yes she is a little kid which means that you should you know take better care of her and she can't always know everything but she is smarter than most of them give her credit for and I feel like that's a little unfair to her that she definitely is smarter and more conscientious of what's going on than they think that she is um, definitely underestimate her as a whole on a lot of occasions which is a shame. But despite all that, she is very close to her siblings. She really loves her siblings a whole lot. Wants them to always be able to go together to Narnia and have fun adventures together. She stood by Edmund even though he did betray them. She easily forgave him, easily brought him back into the fold, and uh, was happy just to have him together with them again. So. She loves them very, very deeply and has a deep connection with each of them, even though they aren't the best to her at times. She also never holds their actions against them, which I think is very, very big of her. No matter how many times they underestimate her, no matter how many times they're like, no, you're too little, you need to be taken care of, no matter how much they kind of coddle her or treat her um, in a little bit more of a condescending manner, she never holds it against them. She still loves them so much and forgives them easily for any times that they think that she needs to have a better grip on reality or whenever they you know don't believe her for things that later they find out is true she never holds it against them and continues to just be close to them and uh, have that connection with them. Um, next one i want to talk about is mr tumbles and i know that she has had several different friends in Narnia that she um, connects with a lot of them and that Mr. Tempest is really only in um, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe because later they come at such a later time that he has already um, gone and passed away from Narnia. But I feel like it's an important relationship because it is the relationship that starts everything for their adventures in Narnia and is the first connection that she has because he is her first friend in Narnia. She ends up in the snow, goes to the light post, and ends up seeing him and interacting with him. And she makes a connection with him very easily, visits him a couple times before they end up getting into trouble and before he ends up getting into trouble. So this relationship that she has with Mr. Thomas is what starts everything and it's what allows her to build her love of Narnia off of is her first interaction with Mr. Tumnus was so great and so wonderful that then it continues to build her impression of how Narnia should be and what kind of place it can be, even in the times that it's very hard and dangerous. So she really cares about him and he really cares about her, even though at first he did make um, a mistake by kind of trying to turn her in. 
but then he immediately regrets it and tries to save her. Um, and later from that point, he's always very dear to her and um, is always behind her trying to help her. So I feel like they build a very close relationship, one that is deeper than some of her other ones. And again, it does start her journey through Narnia and gives her an impression of what she expects Narnia to be like and what potential it has. As well. And last but not least, I'd really like to talk about her relationship with Aslan. Um, Lucy is very, very close to Aslan. Um, one second. Okay, sorry about that. Let's keep going. She is um, very, very close to Aslan. Super close to him. And she is constantly looking for him and constantly um, thinking about him and his presence and everything like that. Um, more so than anybody else. I mean, yes, they really care about Aslan. Yes, they um, have a connection with him. But Lucy's the one that's super, super close to him. She has a lot of faith in him. She is constantly believing in him and knowing that he is going to lead them in the right direction and is going to protect them. She's constantly looking after him as he's on his own, um, constantly wanting to speak with him and to see him. Every corner she goes around, she is keeping him in her thoughts, um, especially when after he dies, she's, he's, she's very distraught um, and is only happy again after she finds out that he is, has come back and that it wasn't over forever. Um, even the second time that she comes, she sees him and he is the and he only presents himself to her in a lot of cases. There are a lot of times when her family is around but he waits until everyone else is asleep or whatever and presents himself to her only. Um, so that shows that Aslan also finds his connection with her to be very deep as well. He constantly is connecting to her when he's not connecting always to the others. Um, and she always has faith in him, 100%. Always knows that he's going to be there. Always has faith that he'll be around the corner, if need be. Um, more so than any of her siblings, or even a lot of the Narnians, even. She just truly, truly connects with him, cares about him, and wants him in her life. She wants to have adventures with him and be around him. So she is super super close and that is part of the reason i believe that she is so close to narnia and likes to be in narnia so much is to be close to him as well as the others so very very close connection um very much uh love loves him a whole whole lot <clears throat> okay and last but not least i'd like to talk a little bit about her growth because obviously she is in several different books in this series and she progresses throughout these stories she starts off obviously very very young she starts off just being a kid experiencing the world and experiencing narnia um, but as the books go further she is growing up of course she already grew up and had a full life almost in Narnia before she went back through the wardrobe but <clears throat> as she continues to grow up in the real world um, or in her world depending on what you might say is she's continues to grow and mature even more as she continues to live her life outside of Narnia and then can apply that maturity then to her um, time in Narnia <clears throat> Pardon me guys. I'm still getting over a, a cold, so uh, talking this much is, is uh, bothering my throat a little bit. Hope you don't mind. Um, but yes, she always just keeps her senses about her, and as she matures and grows her smarts and her sense of right and wrong and her ability to um, assess situations continues to grow and to help her adventures in Narnia. So definitely we see that her bravery starts early, but as she continues to have adventures in Narnia, outside of Narnia, she then continues to mature and grow into a um, adult, uh, or a young adult, not quite an adult uh, yet, but a young adult that can be more sure of herself, more confident. Her bravery takes her even into more dangerous situations that she can handle on her own without her siblings' help, um, and she really grows into her, her own. 
she still seems, in my opinion, to keep that joy and that innocence and that kindness always, but we do see her confidence and her, um, her bravery just bloom and bloom and bloom uh, with each different book that she's in. We really see her blossom into this person that can go on these crazy adventures and not think twice and have great judgment who can know what needs to be done and will get it done for the good of everybody else. So, and her connection to Narnia and to Aslan just continues to grow and to flourish as well. Um, continually just trusting that Narnia will be there waiting for her whenever she gets a chance to go back. All right, so that's everything I had on Lucy today. I hope I didn't forget anything. Let me know if you feel like I did forget anything, if you feel like I got anything wrong, your thoughts, your feelings, your opinions. I would love to hear all of them and to see what you think of Lucy Pevensey. Um, if down below is not the best place for you, so uh, you're welcome to comment down below or you're also welcome to head over to my social media or if you want to get updates from me, I do post on social media whenever I have something new up. You can um, follow me on Facebook, which is slash fantasy fiction one. You're welcome to uh, follow me on Twitter, which is at fantasy fiction one. Super easy. They're both the same. Um, you are welcome to join your fellow uh, fantasy fanatics on the Discord. I am on there as well, and you can reach me there. But you can also talk with your fellow fanatics about all things fantasy, about all things book related over there on the Discord as well and have a discussion and see what other people think about Lucy Pevensey um, and share your own opinions or we talk about lots of other fun things um, that are going on and things that we enjoy. So if you'd like to have a chat with everybody, your link will be down below. You are welcome to click it and join our server. We'd be happy to have you. You already have several people over there chatting and having a good time and discussing different aspects of fantasy and books. So we'd be happy to have you join us. Um, if you want more content from me or different content from me, you can head over to the blog fantasyfictionfanatics.net. There is lots of stuff over there. I've got different um, thoughts and opinions on different fantasy aspects or book aspects. I've got stuff for writing on there. I've got book suggestions, book recommendations and reviews, uh, some more personal posts about me and my love of books and fantasy. So anything that you might be interested in, it will be over there. Um, you can also join my newsletter, which does give you monthly updates uh, and some behind the scenes look of Fantasy Fiction Fanatics video making. Um, yeah, so hopefully yeah, you find some more stuff over there. And I think that is about it for today. I guess I will see you guys in the next class. Please be sure to let me know if you ever want to see anything particular on uh, the channel or on the blog. You are welcome to let me know. Thank you again to the subscriber who asked for this character analysis. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.